Hello everyone, this is Seher again from DentaVest and I'm here to discuss some uh, concepts on human anatomy. As we know this is a very important subject of exam and we are going to discuss uh, human anatomy as we know it's a very vast subject in two videos. So this is the first video that is starting with we can see some of the contents here like cranial anatomy, osteology, fossas, cranial foraminas, uh, the cranial bones, maxilla, mandible, sinus, CSF circulation, blood-brain barrier, oral cavity, the facial spaces, temporomandibular joint, um, the mastigatory muscles, TMJ imaging, hide external carotid, the blood circulation to the face, and the venous drainage along with the laryngeal nerves. Now we can see the nasal cavity. So sensory innervation of the nasal cavity is from branches of V2, that is maxillary division of trigeminal, nasoorbital, infraorbital, and the greater palatine. And the blood supply is from sphenopalatine branch of maxillary artery, anti-ethmoidal ophthalmic, and septal branch of superior label. We can see different boundaries of nasal cavity, but the medial wall of the nasal cavity made up of nasal septum, as we know, that is the most important. Now we can see different systems and the location of drainage for the cone case and the meatuses. The important one we have the maxillary sinus that drains in the middle meatus of the nose and the nasal lacrimal apparatus that drains in the inferior meatus of the nose. Now this is important, it is called as kiesel back splaxus that is uh, supplying uh, the anastomosis of five arteries are the kiesel back splaxus. And uh, why it is important because the epistaxis or the nose bleed, it mainly happens from this kiesel back splaxus. You can also remember the maxillary sinus, it is lined by schneiderian membrane which is a type of pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Now we can see here the anatomy of the oral cavity and we can see this is a very good picture. It has good details here. Now we can see here the components of oral cavity is the oral vestibule and the oral cavity proper. And we can see that the posterior termination of the oral cavity proper, it is called as a palatoglossal arch. That's an important question that can be asked in the exam. Now we can see different types of taste buds. Filiform, fungiform, circumvallate, foliate, filiform papillae we know they are the most numerous. They give the rough texture to your tongue. So tongue has to be rough, it is smooth, that is called as glossitis. That can be sign of vitamin deficiency, mainly vitamin B12 or riboflavin deficiency. So this filiform papillae, they don't have the nerve supply, they don't have the blood supply and they do not have any taste buds either. Fungiform papillae, they have the taste bud, they are scattered among filiform. The circumvallate papillae are present right at the V area, right? So you can see here, these are small, small circumvallate papillae and this is the V of the tongue. This is anterior two-third and that is posterior one-third. So circumvallate papillae are spread around the V, sulcus terminalis. And the tip of sulcus terminalis, we have the foramen cecum that's a remnant of thyroglossal duct. So this is the posterior most part of the tongue where we have the epiglottis. We can see the lymph node or lymph drainage of the tongue as well. As we know the, end, the tip of the tongue where it drains answer is some mental group of lymph nodes. So that can be asked in the exam. One more point important about the circumvallate papillae is that the circumvallate papillae they are associated with one abna gland that a minus salivary gland which has serous secretion or watery secretion just like your parotid gland. Now we can see here the uvula that is suspended from the soft palate and incomplete fusion of palatine shells can give rise to bifid uvula. So if you have unilateral damage to the pharyngeal plexus, it can shift the uvula to the contralateral side. Now what are fauches? Fauches are the soft fold of the muscles and fauches are between anti and posterior pillar and between both pillars we have the palatine tonsils which are present. Now the anterior pillar, palatoglossus muscle, posterior pillar is made up of palatopharyngeus and the functions of both palatoglossus and palatopharyngeus we should know. Like palatoglossus draws the tongue and soft palate closes together while palatopharyngeus will elevate the pharynx, help close the nasopharynx and aids in swallowing of it. Now this is a very important section. We should know the phases of swallowing. So we have three phases here. 
द ओरल फेज द फेरेंजल फेज एंड द इसोफेजल फेज द ओरल फेज वी कैन सी द नर्व्स इन्वॉल्व इज सी एन फाइव मैस्टिकेशन टंग इन्वॉल्व सी एन ट्वेल्व इन द फेरेंजल फेज द टेंस वैली प्लाटीनी बाय सी एन फाइव प्लाटो ग्लॉस लेवेटो वैली प्लाटीनी बाय सी एन टेन फर्स्ट Uh, step in pharyngeal phase is to close the nasal pharynx then elevate the pharynx and the height bone that is your stylo palato and salpingo are going to do it the longitudinal muscle then closing the pharynx then the epiglottis get retroverted vocal cords get closed and finally the bolus of the food will pass from pharynx to the esophagus by the relaxation of cricopharyngeal muscle that act as a upper esophageal sphincter and finally the food will be in the foot pipe that is esophageal phase peristalsis and larynx pharynx and height bone they will relax again and come back to their natural or original position now we can see uh, the different types of uh, salivary glands the parotid submandibular and the sublingual but before that we can see some points about the lacrimal gland too lacrimal gland where the tears are being produced that go into puncta then into the canal then into the sac and then into the nasolacrimal duct while the lacrimal gland paired serous gland that is involved in tear production parasympathetic innervation so superior salivary nucleus greater petrosal nucleus and the lacrimal nerve so superior salivary nucleus as i told you innervated by 7 is providing parasympathetic secretomotor fiber to the lacrimal and all the glands the preganglionic and the postganglionic is a very important section so number 7 branch a uh, greater petrosal branch of number 7 give preganglionic and lacrimal branch of v1 will give postganglionic to the lacrimal gland now we have the other important three major gland like a parotid submandibular and the sublingual again for these glands their duct structure is important and the innervation as we can see preganglionic and the postganglionic so preganglionic lesser petrosal branch of cn9 postganglionic leaves otic ganglia with the oligotemporal branch of v3 some mandibular gland we can see preganglionic cord tympani branch of 7 and postganglionic leaves ganglion passes to the gland for sublingual it is exactly the same the preganglionic and postganglionic now the synapse of parotid gland is in the otic ganglia while some mandibular ganglia is for some mandibular and sublingual both of them now we can see the tmj structure too so tmj structure it has uh, your it's a bilateral synovial joint and this joint is formed from the mandibular condyle and the skull base on both the sides so it is a diethroidal joint so by articular disc this joint is divided into upper joint compartment and the lower joint compartment the upper joint compartment which is between the disc and the glenoid fossa and the lower joint compartment will be between the disc and the condyle lower compartment is for rotation and upper compartment is for translation so we can see different components of joints are there glenoid fossa articular cartilage articular disc meniscus condylar cartilage cap and condyle of mandible it also has the ligaments and the articular capsule that is surrounding the joint so bony component here become the condyle of mandible mandibular fossa which is concave condyle of mandible which is elliptical uh, posterior condyle is rounded and convex and entroinferior aspect of uh, condyle is concave this concavity is called as fovea pterygoidea it's a entro superior aspect of the condyle that is going to be articulating with the glenoid fossa now articular eminence is present on the anterior part of glenoid fossa it's a small convexity anterior to concavity of the glenoid fossa and one thing we know it's a very important thing here that uh, although tmj is a synovial joint but it is not lined by hyaline cartilage it is lined with fibrocartilage so that is one thing that is exception now articular disc as we know it's a very important structure it's a fibrocartilaginous biconcave disc and lies between the condyle and the mandibular fossa and this is the one that divide the joint cavity into superior inferior now there are different regions of the articular disc we have like thin zone thick anterior posterior band posterior band uh, has some tissues attached to it that is called as bilaminar zone bilaminar zone is the only zone of tmj which is vascular and innervated so this is an important point that you can go through it 
Now there's a capsule that is surrounding the entire TMJ. It has a lining of uh, synovium and this membrane is going to secrete the synovial fluid for lubrication of the joints. Now the TMJ imaging. Now we are coming to a very important section that is the blood supply to the face. Uh, through the external carotid artery. So the common carotid artery at the level of superior border of thyroid cartilage is going to branch into internal carotid and external carotid. Internal carotid will travel upward, supply your brain and give only one branch near the uh, on the face near the eye that is your ophthalmic artery. All, all of the branches of internal carotid is inside the brain. The rest of the head and neck is all supplied by external carotid. So external carotid is a very very important topic. We should know everything about the course of it the branches of it, the supply and especially when they are giving you terminal branches of any artery or nerve that is important. For example, in case of external carotid, we can see superficial temporal and the maxillary artery are the terminal branches of it. So everything we are doing here, we are not skipping anything in the external carotid. Now one of the branch of external carotid, the lingual, we should also know at what level like lingual artery originate from external carotid at the greater horn of the height bone. What is supplying? What are the branches of lingual artery? That is also important. So the last branch of lingual artery is the deep lingual artery. Now we can see the next. Hi my dear student who are preparing for IMDD ADAT a part 2 exam. Uh, thanks so much for watching this review video of the subject. If you really liked it, please buy the full version by clicking on the link given in the description. With the purchase of every video, you will be getting free live assessment and evaluations on the subject as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Dentabest channel now to get the latest updates on the smart videos. If you have any questions, please comment me in the box below. I, Dr. Seher from Dentavest, wishes you all the best for exam and thanks again for watching.